here. That could be the case. I'm actually, yeah, we're going to see. I think they're just, they want to secure their, their late game at the very least and, and see what they can get out of their mid game. The Pugna will buy a lot of time here, I think. But anyway, if you're l watching on the live stream, welcome in. We are Sindarin and LD casting game number two between Newbie and IG. The winner goes to the winner's bracket of TI. The loser goes to the loser's bracket. This is the final matchup before we go to the main event on the 18th. So there's going to be a couple of days break where we set up the main event and the teams get a little rest and get prepared for the biggest tournament of their lives. So a really big story for, for both teams. And of course, we'll be very interested in starting off in the winner's bracket so you have a little bit of space and so you're guaranteed top six from the get-go. So let's have a look at the teams, how they're, how they're distributing their heroes. In the bottom lane for Newbie, we're going to have Xiao 8 on the tight hunter towards the mid lane move the battle on the begins. invoker and then towards the top lane. It's going to be an aggressive trial lane from Newbie, consisting of Hao on the Luna, Sunshang on Shadow Demon, and finally Banana on the Rubik. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this a bit during the draft, and is the Shadow Demon Rubik pair, and it does feel quite odd. But before we get to that, let's introduce IG. We've got Luo playing the Gyrocopter. Faith will be on your Shadow Shaman. For now, 430 heads towards bottom. Chuan uh, trotting towards top. And it looks like they really want to swap up these lanes. They want the Pugna matched up. I suppose against the, the Tidehunter, they're going to get the Void going mid to deal with Mu. And he's already got a poor man shield, so he will be hard to harass out of the slain. But yeah, Cinderin to, to, I guess, to follow up on it. They are, in fact, tri-laning with a Shadow Demon Rubik. We haven't seen this duo together too often, and I believe they have a fairly poor win rate when they're on the same team because they just kind of do the same thing. They both set up for another hero, generally. They're better in, or generally better in dual lane setups, because like you said, they can each set up one lane, but uh, the good analysis for me that Newbie have made already here is that, okay, IG are running a support duo consisting of Shadow Shaman and Mirana, who don't really have that much damage early on. So maybe you can run this kind of tri lane where the weakness that Rubik and Shadow Demon have, which is they don't have too much damage, can kind of be made up for with Lunar Blessing. They're running with a Luna in the lane, so their damage is actually really significant, and as a result, Gyro isn't getting a single CS so far. Luo, he's 0-0 and against 6-2 and on the on the Luna. He has to get like every single CS whenever one is handed to him. He cannot afford to miss. And, and if they're going to turn this lane and, and actually get him out into the creeps, it's really going to come down to Chwat. Can he hit a good arrow this game? They have some setup in theory from the Shackles. You can see Faith yet to skill anything, but... Uh, it, it's not the best. You've got to put yourself in harm's way to, to initiate. And they go for a blind arrow here. That's not going to connect. They did, I also want to mention, D Ward. Uh, so they've got really limited vision here for Newbie when it comes to the supports in the jungle. But uh, they still have some observer wards up in their own, protecting the rotations. The other lanes, Tide versus Pugna. And we talked a lot about YYF's Pugna. I think we both are fanboys of it and gush over it. But we're not seeing it this game. It's actually I'm very surprised they chose to do it that way. Since it's an off-lane Pugna and it's a mid-lane Void, it makes me wonder whether what IG chose to distribute their heroes this way just for the level 1 mind game of how the lanes are going to be sent, if that's how. Because they both, they're both very competent on, the, on both heroes, so they can swap them as they want, but I still feel like YYF, YYF's Pugna is, is almost iconic at this point, so a little surprising to see for him. Oh, he's he's doing eight. a good job too, so... He just got a south cancel. That is that is not good for Xiaowei. And on top of that, the tower siege is going to begin. You go, you fast forward five minutes. This tower nearly guaranteed to be either dead or about to be. But here comes Banana Top. He's got a haste. And will he find an opening to jump in? They're going to deploy another sentry ward. And they will be able to de-ward one. The, the other one will still be there. Not that it matters. Yeah, the one important thing about this for newbies is just that now they know the camp is blocked for the next three minutes. Arrow fishing out. It's going to hit the Centaur Conqueror. Got it's him. actually called Centaur Conqueror. It's, <laughs> it was it's such a name. The War Chief's not good enough. Such a such a legend creep. It sounds like more badass than the actual Centaur. You know? Yeah, that's true. The Centaur War Runner. They should almost switch names, right? Uh, it's, it's like a War Runner or a Conqueror. I yeah. mean, it seems pretty straightforward to me, at least. But. Either way, no, although I'll end up helping Newbie farm a little bit here. So, looking at the lanes, our Void's actually doing very well mid. And I think this is where, one of the reasons why we've seen a lot more Void is his laning is surprisingly good. He started with the poor man shield, he's got 76 damage, and with a PMS, nearly possible to bring down. They do disrupt Luo top lane, but they're not going to go on him here. And, well, they're slowing down the gyro. I guess that's the main thing, but not so much. they're not really stopping him. He's 13-0 after a pretty bad start. Yeah, they, they did a great a great job on the first wave or two, but because of the pulling, IG have been able to set him up again. And actually, Howe is going to get hit by an arrow. He's getting really low here. Can Chuan do it? He needs one more attack. Won't make it. 
but they're still gonna at least put a lot of pressure here. There's the counter engage disruption into Sunstrike. Chuan will it's complete. Oh, uh, what was that leap? That was the. That was like some what? matrix <laughs> shit right there. Oh, he like twisted and just convulsed his body and somehow magically made it over to the left. I don't even know what There's that was. There's no salves on Yubi's side, so it's going to take a long time for them to bring Hal back up. He might actually... Looks like he's going to run back to base. All oh, right, there it goes. They flew in a salve with the courier, so... He's going to be brought up healthy. And... Well, the laning stage still going Yubi's way by a slight bit. I guess the main thing to point out is that Mu is having a good start on the... On the Invoker in the mid lane, although, like you said, YYF is, is keeping up with him. I still think early, about the 10 to 15 minute mark, I think farm on Invoker is more valuable than Void. He gets the Midas, he gets the faster levels. The two Forge Spirits are going to be absolutely huge in countering out the Gyrocopter in the early team fights until he gets a BKB. And Mu, judging from how he's played the rest of the day, I see no, no reason not to expect him to play an amazing XOR Invoker in the mid game. Yeah, Mu has been on fire. I, coming into this match, oh, the life trade. There's move. an attempt bottom lane on Xiao Aid, and he's dropping low. Not dead yet. Chrono into arrow in mid as well, though. That's where the real kill is going to be. YYF and Chuan combining in faith with an absolute sick KS on the other shock. <laughs> Biggest KS I've seen all tournament. That's but, that's not an arrow you're going to miss. <laughs> but they might want it actually on the Shadow Shaman. I I agree with giving him the first blood once again. I think this hero is a is a support that really needs his gold early on to get fast arcane boots. And this is probably more important than the void getting a little bit of extra gold. And with YYF not even going for the Midas, but starting with Treads, I think that was a good call by my face. To take it. And considering they're getting outflunged a bit, that's a nice rotation as well. They're not getting the most out of the top lane. As mentioned, Gyro's caught up, but still the CS is going to be slightly ahead. But as soon as you get Chrono, you make a movement and Dyer's use it instead of the kill. Sometimes we see teams pick Void, but don't really try to use the Chrono every time they can. And now they bring YYF into the top lane, so they decide he's durable enough to withstand punishment, and uh, he'll just be. Hanging out with Luo. Maybe we see Luo rotate. For now, though, he is staying top. It's kind of an odd pair to keep at the top lane. Nah, it's a pretty strange lane, but... I imagine Luo's gonna leave here. Radiant's bottom tower is Elsa doesn't attack. really make sense to make the rotation unless they Radiant wanted to gank, but since fortified. the Chronos here is on cooldown and Luo isn't level 6, they don't really have too much killing power between them. But when Luo does, Radiant's bottom that lane tower is going is to under wreck. Attack. But the other thing that's nice about the Pugna pick is... We often look at this as just a pure pushing hero sin, but... They know newbie likes a five man a lot. We've seen that all day long. And if you pick Pugna, you can just. Finish. So there was an Radiant's attempt by the Tide Hunter to join the team, but fallen. it's actually IG who strike first. They get the first blood. Now they get the first tower. And Hal is in trouble. He showed himself at the bottom lane. Arrow as well. Nice dodge here from Hal. That's just going to make for more life. Probably trade. get out of here. Yes. Oh, that was close. Close call, but. Dodging the arrow, crucial here to staying alive. He showed that he was there. He TP'd down to try to get the deny on the tower. And they saw the one glaive attack coming from the trees, and they are like, wait a second. What do you think Dyer's you're doing here, mister? Is under oh, attack. YYF is smoked. He's got Chrono as well, and he's wrapping around. They're going to be spotted out by Banana, but not before they jump in on move. He hasn't finished his Midas yet. The life drain and arrow combined. Another great kill Your set up by the Chronosphere. And already, this Faceless Void has done far more than the enemy Tide. And generally not something you would say at eight minutes in, but indeed it's the case then. They're just not letting Yubi find a fight. The rotation from Xiao Wei up to the top lane has been pretty much useless. He's been standing here for a while with, a, with his 30 CS and his level six, but IG aren't giving them a fight. They don't, they just avoid them and they know, like you said, they could just trade with a Pugna. They're putting way more emphasis on getting these single target ganks where they can turn it into a tower. Whereas Newbie's lineup, they kind of need more than one kill to get they can call them actual team fight. They have found 430. He's overextended a bit here. He'll drop his ward, but that's just going to be extra gold into Newbie's pockets. They'll happily claim it. 40 plus the hero kill. It does take Still four. four heroes, though. It takes four just to get the Pugna. And all the while, your Gyro's finally gotten some breathing room top lane. What has he purchased here? Oh, he's actually going for the drum. So not going for anything greedy like a Midas or Dominator. And I think going for the drum build here is the best choice. It's good analysis from Luo in this situation that this game is not one in which he can play greedy. There will be fights, and he needs to have early mid-game impact with his gyro. For now, his team is buying him a lot of space, like you said, but he will need to get relevant within the next 10 minutes. And with a drum into BKB, I think that's the best the best way for him to get relevant. And another thing about the drum that you don't get from going for the Midas, a lot of the time we talk about the tank ability, but the extra mana is actually really important for a hero like Gyro, who can spam pretty much. He's got a low cooldown, obviously, on the Rocket Barrage, and Call down and low cooldown for ultimate flank counter Radiant's 30 second cooldown. You want to be able attack. to keep going and keep putting the pressure. Bottom lane, Schwan's waiting for an arrow. He's pinning out how there's no backup for this. 
Do you really think you can solo kill him? It's only a level two arrow. Radiance and at the same time, they're almost losing attack. their tier one top. There will be reinforcements coming in here from newbie, but they're not going to find anyone. And YWF is going bottom now. They brought in the void, and this is going to be trouble for Hal. He doesn't have a TP. Uh, if he doesn't run right now, he's toast. He's running, but I think it's too late. It's a level two time walk. The Chrono's deployed, and Tron just has to find the angle for this arrow. Let's it fly, and he misses! He misses, Tron! Oh, he's not having the best day, but they still get the kill regardless. He even leaped in position for that. He was so afraid of hitting the creep in front of him, but... His Marana is normally very impressive. This is a, a very uncharacteristic off day. Well, he hit all the other ones. Yeah, that's true. On Chronosphere targets, yeah. though, so uh, not Okay, really game one, not so much. He hit the creeps there. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I'm sure he'll recover. He's got Chrono to set him up. It can't be that hard to hit them. Still three for one for IG, and the top tower did go down at the same time. It will be denied by Xiao8 at the very least for newbie, so at least that goes their way, but... This is a 10-minute Midas for Mu with 52 CS. He would have loved to have this at like 7 or 8, but he got killed twice. His impact has been delayed a lot, Radiant's and I think the choice of delaying the Invoker attack. as the priority was a great call from IG. He is perhaps the most, the highest impact hero on newbie's side right now. At least for like the first 20, 20 minutes or yes. so, I would say. And maybe at that point the Luna starts to take over, but... And now the Pugna is starting to get level 4 Netherwards, so they've stalled enough for, for Mu to be at a point where he actually doesn't even want to cast his spells in the team fights anymore. We are 10 and a half minutes in and we have not seen a Ravage. And this is newbie we're talking about. They, they wanted to fight. Xiao8 rotated top. He actually abandoned the bottom lane and went towards there with the Ravage. But this is where the Pugna in that map lane is just so masterful. As soon as Xiao8 leaves the lane, the Pugna pressures the tower and they never even got to fight. I feel like this is maybe the one of the best ways I've seen teams try to deal with newbie's approach. Shao Wei likes to move once he gets his key ultimate. I mean, if he's tied or doomy, is you know, whatever the ult is, and then he goes for the gank. So you just you take that tower. It's, it's basically a free one if he's not in the lane. And since then, it's just been opening after opening for IG. Now they're smoked. They want more. They've got the shaman wards available. They can use these to get a kill, or maybe sin. They can even just go straight for the tower and reserve them for that. Yeah, Chronosphere is available now. If he goes into Int Treads, I think he has enough mana for the jump and the Chrono, but... He can almost solo kill, not the Tide maybe, but pretty much anyone else if he gets some lucky bashes here. Yeah. I don't think he can kill the Luna either. She has 8 armor and, and 900 health, but... Mm, at least the supports are very easy pickoffs for him, but... It's not the point, it's not the plan anyway. So it doesn't matter that he, if he, even if he can't solo kill him, it's okay, because Chuan is always with him. They're running around as a tandem, pretty much, these two. And now Chuan, as a result of that, is going to be level 6, actually, so... I mean, all things are looking very good for IG. 2,000 golden experience lead is not amazing, but considering what the game plan is, I think it's good enough for them. They have a lead running a Void Gyro as their cores, who are, I wouldn't say ultra greedy, but they're just really strong late game and generally need a little bit more farm to fully come to their prime. The Void especially, but... They're not, they're not giving up towers. They sit on all of them, and, and this is really the beauty of the Pugna, I think, for IG. A hero that we were discussing in the draft, we both feel is underutilized, and IG, per perhaps the best team to use the Pugna in this tournament. Well, for now, they're comfortable. Do you think newbies should just be sitting back? Do they need to be forcing the issue? They're up against a mech right now. Does if that... newbies sit back, they lose Roche in a minute, because the medallion is picked up on Faith. They don't know that, but... It's actually straight into the Roche pit for IG. I think they saw that since they have pretty good vision in the area. They're even going to sub strike my way. Oh, what a great backtrack. Uh, what a player. Or maybe it missed, actually. I think that was a backtrack, though. But. You know, if you're a newbie, you, you want to fight this, but at the same time, I think you can't. Like, the position of IG is great here. They have Chronosphere available, Nether Ward level 3, and the mech advantage as well. I think if newbie goes into this, this could be the biggest mistake in the game. They might just let it go. Or they do. It's they already at low. Least not go in. Roach is very low. They've got to commit to this one if they want to. The killing is there. The Roach is going to fall. And now the turn comes. It's a chrono by YWF. It can be stolen here by Banana if he so chooses. He will grab it. Now the chrono goes back the other way, but there's no follow up for the 430. And we're absolutely fine. How? Not so much. He tries to fight this one out, but the Eclipse has already been used. And now it's just a route. Newbie on the run. Schwan in pursuit. And YYF can pop that mask. Commandus in just a few seconds. Arrow let loose. How just tanks it to the face. Why way up this? Thanks for the gold, my friend. They'll bring him down and they look for more. They're gonna dive Sanction even farther and they easily deal with him. He gets ripped a new one. IG are now looking not only at a Roche and four kills, but also maybe even the tier two bottom. Radiance bottom tower is under it's attack. It's like the, you know, Radiant when we saw that game one, it's like they just swapped over. Yeah, they just swapped mentality. game one, and now IG have stomped the game two. IG had crushed in game one, and they're like, this can't be true. 
And we were actually, we were wondering if it was the players we were hearing in the building, because we could hear a lot of yelling. I, we were wondering if it was IG actually really getting upset with each other. But I don't, I don't know if it was. They, I, I guess they, they've calmed down and, and started working towards what seems to be an, an absolutely very easy game too for them. They're, they're getting out of control at the 14 minute mark, just like Newbie were in the previous game. That was just such a difficult fight for Newbie to take. Even up on the way they can make it go. They do have Rabbit and Elephant if they want to throw it out. Uh, they won't need it. They get low. They also are going to steal the, uh, the Rocket Barrage. You'd love to have to call it out, but they'll, they'll take what they can get at this point. It's going to cost them a tower, though. Attack. And that's, I think that's the, pug, the beauty of the Pugna and the Shadow Shot that's going to work for that. Now. I think this is going Radiant's to be the story going forward, is that falling. every time Newbie goes for a gank, if they don't have the lanes pushed out first, they'll lose something that's more valuable than the kill. So they have to get some sort of map control and start split pushing, but they don't really have the best heroes for it. Invoker is great with the Forge Spirits, but Luna at this point, with her amount of farm, she can't safely split push. You've seen every time Hal tries to go for it, Void and Hirana can kill her off, and it's happened a couple of times, it might happen again. Actually, speaking of the devil, it's ha happening right now. YYF has run for a again. They're on the way down for now, but this time there's disruption available. Oh but no. the Chrono caught him! Two get caught! Sunshine walks into it right as YYF arrives. Sunshine coming through and backtrack nicely. That's just icing on the cake. YYF, I think he would have died there if it hadn't, but... Oh, he might still? Oh, 18 HP. Just barely living through that. And they get the win again. If Sangsheng was just out of chrono range, maybe can get off that disruption and, and keep the Luna alive a bit longer, but... They, if, the if Luna he wasn't just not working out. If he wasn't in the chrono, that would have been a nil for nil engage. Then IG would have disengaged. They would have been like, okay, disruption, we don't want to fight this. Uh, but the, the, back, the backtrack is strong with this one as well, Sin. At the very least, though, Banana stole Chronosphere. So they traded the Luna for a great spell steal. Now I'm looking for Newbie to apply this because they have, um, they they have also the have Eclipse. Their they have their mech now as well. They have mech, they have Eclipse, they have Ravage. It's time to go if you're Newbie, especially you're newbie, so you want to fight, right? <laughs> this is <laughs> that's the best play. situation you're going to get for a while, having these abilities ready. And sitting back and farming at this point, I, I just don't think it's going to be good enough here. Every time Chrono comes off cooldown, they just seem to find a kill. I think every Chrono usage from YYF has given them a kill. He has been part of six out of eight kills, and every single one of those, apart from maybe one, has been a Chrono kill. Have we seen a single Ravage this game? I want to say no. I don't think so. He didn't get to use it in the Roach fight, right? And we haven't seen one. Oh, if he did, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> no, he got chronoed. That's yeah, right. He that's got right. burst down immediately. Yeah, we Wepus is, sa is shaking his head, so... Um, I, I, uh, no chronos, or uh, no ravages this game. We're 17 minutes in. How often do you feel like you can say that about Nubi? I feel like it's just the formula is always very clear for them. They get level 6 on Shelly, and they just start pushing with whatever his big team fight ultimate is, be it a Doom or Ravage. Normally he's got an early mech or blink dagger on that time, but they haven't they have yet to actually threaten the tower, to be totally honest. The mid tower is above half HP. Your tops are well above it as well, and even the bottom tower at full HP. And there's only one way I see Newbie winning the team fights, and that's actually either a bad chrono from IG or a good Dyer's chrono from the Rubik who has it right attack. now. Because else, they're fighting into Nether Ward. And it's a level four Nether Ward at this point from Ferrari. Newbie's lineup are taking so much damage just Here by casting the their abilities. Uh-oh, they're looking for a team fight again. Chrono is available once again on YYF. And now they're cutting. They're actually taking the northern route here, wrapping through the Dire Ancients and ready to pounce on mid. Courier making a delivery. This is a war zone. Be careful. 430 will get spotted out to start things off. Now let loose. And now will it connect with the point of the dump that starts the next one? Tries to shackle the other, but the counter initiates there. There's the, the chrono. chrono comes oh, out. Boy. Chrono number two, though, YYF says. It's my turn to have a little fun. Two for one thus far. But the mech from 430 does get off. YYF needs to be getting kited, though. There's not much follow up, and he will go down. That's a big streak to end. The stolen chrono works its magic. They do get out with the Aegis at least, but it cost them three and, and two cores at that, and all they get are two supports. And how lived. So he's gonna... He might have a BKB in the next fight, which is really crucial. He can still... If he gets chronoed, he's in a lot of trouble, but... The one thing that actually gave that away, which was very unfortunate for IG, if you're looking here in the mid lane, there's a sentry ward placed by, by Newbie. What gave the smoke away? Since smoke doesn't get spotted by sentries anymore since a couple of packs ago, they actually placed a ward from their smoke right here. So IG were like, so Newbie were like, okay, where did that ward come from? Uh oh, speaking of where did they come from, that was a very good. Yeah. Well, there might be a trade here for 
30. Perhaps at least he's losing the Aegis. It's Moo with the back step. Wants to finish him off. Faith dropping low, but the ward just keeps on sapping and doing quite a bit of work. And well, they're gonna push through. So they got three for one. The Pugna's still here. And three for one. Radiance and did lose the Aegis, so effectively I guess three for two, but great trade from IG. This tower might fall. I don't think they're gonna get it in this go, but they're gonna get it fairly low because of the uh, Nether Blast here, of course, but yeah, Banana will go in here. He steals Arrow. I don't think IG want to stick around much longer. It's getting too risky at this point with Luna back on the field. It also shows you how weak Nubi are when they don't have their ultimates. With, with no Eclipse and no Ravage, they really can't take the fight. The Pug is oh, always ready to go. This is why they take Pug. This tower just doesn't have much left. Oh, oh, no. It's on two, and they go straight on the sun. But now he gets eviscerated as well. IG, clean house. 60 to 6 your score. They get the tower, they get the kills, and now they've got full map control. That's the last, well not the last, but it's it's probably the most important tower. The last tower you want to lose if you're newbie. And with that, the jungle's been completely occupied. And this type of performance on the on the void we're seeing from YYF is, is showing why this hero suddenly started being a top pick. He, he was He's ignored very well. I feel game. like the past few days, Sid, we hardly saw any void, but I mean, what a, what a great game for YYF. He set up almost every single kill. Yeah, void's win rate hasn't been that good over the last, uh, basically over the qualifiers. And I think it's because teams have just been, I want to put it in the same category as the Razor, where teams are picking it really early on, and just in some games it turns out it's not really that great of a pick, but in the right situation, void Radiant's can be amazing. I think the, under attack. the time when he got picked by IG in this game, makes a lot of sense. Like, as a third or fourth pick, when you're starting to see the draft unfold and you can see what options you have for laning, uh, for combos, of course, like they put up Radiant's with the Gyro and the Togna here, it makes attack. a lot of sense. But Razor, even with his very low win rate, he still remains a top tier pick and ban in this tournament. Dyer's I think it's interesting to see. I mean, it is a good hero, but... Radiant's you know, bottom tower down. is under attack. Oh, still cooling down for now, and they do have Ravage, but no blink. Oh, stolen. Oh, it's a flat cannon. Oh, that's... Oh, awesome. that's... You really would love to steal. And they go in, they throw everything at 430. He just got chunked. Oh man, never had a chance. And that was without Soul Catcher. It's, it's not enough to respect Ban against 430. They have to respect, throw everything at him and ball him up. Well, they get him to Arrow. Oh my god. Oh, oh, no, ready. No, oh, no, oh, ready. Oh, he god. found three. YYF setting up beautifully. Now the arrow. It's not going to connect because of the d disruption. Still doesn't matter. YYF's already got BKB. He cleans up two. Now he's doing his own work. He doesn't even need to follow up anymore. In comes your Marana. Looking for an arrow. And based on the chase. The light blade move here. The call out Floyd. Can he get off the sun strike? Still cooling down. His invoke was nothing available. And now Sunshine runs, but you can't escape from the big bad boy. Four stepped in. Maybe the creeps will be Sunshine Saber. Savior, but he's got to run all the way to the base. Faith? Uh, no mana. Forward. Faith either. No mana. Ah. He's actually getting out because no one has mana. Saved by the creep block. <laughs> Man, why, why, yeah. He, is. he just solo killed two heroes in Chrono. Like, I, I don't think there was any other damage during that. Maybe one nuke. And the Chrono itself was just amazing. When I saw him going for the time walk, I was like, he's actually pretty far away, but he clips three heroes in the periphery of the Chronosphere. Just beautiful play out by YYF. For me, this game has been one of the best Void performances we've seen in the tournament. Uh, and they're using Pugna so well with it. Just a very well-rounded draft. The newbie, they're still struggling to find a footing. They got a decent team fight a little while ago, but they're still... They're bleeding. This, They're really bleeding. This lineup should be playing from ahead. Newbie's draft is designed to take a lot of towers early with uh, the Blink Dagger or Mech on the Tide Hunter. As soon as you get six, you group up with Eclipse and you start going for towers. You have Disruption Illusions to help aid the Siege. Exhorting Volker, especially with the Midas and the Necrobook build, should be able to apply pressure, but after the start IG had, I feel like it all goes back to that first rotation from Xiaowei. He goes to top, he gets nothing, and 436 is down. What's up? Chronosphere is available again. YYF. That's the thing with this ult. It's always up the field, like compared to other big team players. It does have a decent Radiance cooldown, especially at level 1, fallen. 2 minutes, but even without the Axon, you're looking at an 80 second cooldown once it's level 3, whereas Ravage, quite a bit longer, 150 at all levels. Even something like Eclipse, it goes from 160 to 140. It does not scale nearly as well is under in terms of cooldown. No, the cooldown on 
that was perhaps the most important buff Void got, which was a couple of versions ago. He got a lot of other buffs, but to me, the Chronosphere buff was the most important one, the cooldown reduction. It really makes the hero. It's, Backtrack, it's changed Backtrack can make for some highlight reels, but top lane, they're going to jump on Moo here, perhaps. Moonlight Shadow scouting him out. Have they gotten vision just yet? They're just out of range because it is nighttime, and he's hiding in the tree. Now Chuan, looking for an arrow. Chuan's going to connect, and Chronosphere came in, and that's it. All over for Moo. He can try and Ghost Walk now. Not going to matter. At the very least, for Nuki there, they only lose one hero, and the BKB from YYS, YYF was used there, so not the worst, I guess, from Newbie, but killing off, again, the Invoker, just delaying his impact even more. He's died five times in this game, and maybe that's just been been the plan from IG, that they see, okay, in the, la in the previous games Newbie have played, Mu is playing amazing today. Let's shut him down, not only take his hero out of the game, but shut down his his snowballing mentality, basically. If, if you start hitting a bad streak, and you're a player like Mu who's usually playing amazingly from ahead, maybe you get crippled a little bit even for the next series. I do want to point out while that was all going on, they dropped a really aggressive Observer attack. Ward. And if they ever go for this tier 2 top, this could be big for IG. Well, there's no gem out yet on the field, and for now they focus on ropes. They blink into the pit, the medallion thrown out. I also want to talk about how far the game is. We're 25 minutes in, and he's got the form of an offlaner. He's actually a thousand gold up on the enemy side. And he's come by it honestly. 3 2 and 9, been over half the kills. He's taken power, he's taken road for the team. And now, as a reward, he's got McDowell. And he can start to go towards that next big item. This is a gargantuan Shadow Shaman. This is a trouble. This is real trouble. If he gets something like a BKD, Newbie cannot stop him from just shackling. Full duration. If he wants to go for it, we'll see. And they're going to be probably. Aiming to siege high ground very, very soon now with, uh, well, they have everything they need, I think, actually, for, for IG. The only scary thing is the Blink Dagger on Xiao Wei with a great Ravage, follow up with a Dyer's Luna Eclipse, and of course with, uh, with Invoker's combo. It is very Ma Maybe you actually can't even go high ground yet. Even though they have a great lead, the defensive lineup from Newbies, they're not only good on the teamfight oh. offense, they're maybe even better on defense. Newbie now. get cold feet and they think there's a lane ward. And there is, but it's not where they think it is. It's actually off to the side here. So they saw, I don't know if they saw Dyer's every hero, but at least a few. They attack. tried for the D ward, they're not going to get it. Dyer's structures and are Newbie fortified. are in, in an really unusual position for themselves. Generally, they get ahead pretty early, but they are firmly on the back foot. So like you said, Maybe they can have a huge team fight if they still chrono or uh, potentially call down, I suppose, but that's all. They haven't had any upgrades to do it. Can they just farm this and take this late? Is there any chance they can outlay game the void fire? We're getting a lot of feedback right now, actually. That's, this is something else. We're getting a lot of feedback that the sound of the game is now louder than us. I don't know if you managed to... I don't think you touched anything. I did not touch so anything. So I am not sure. Okay, I don't, I don't know what's going on, guys. Hopefully it gets fixed very soon, and hopefully you guys aren't just trolling us, but... <laughs> It yeah. seems like... Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe it's been fixed already. We'll Hopefully we'll Valve are on the case. Yeah. They, they're under definitely attack. paying attention to the sound. I, I believe they're, they're grabbing our audio for the stream from Dota attack. TV. So, yeah. so whatever, they're, whatever yeah. mixing they're doing is on that. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll go through them clear right now. Radiant's but, top tower has fallen. Well, if you're in game, lane. if you're in game, you can manually turn down your game sounds, though. If you want to end raise the voice bar. So you have to Dyer's control there. Bottom tower is under attack. Anyway, here we go. Onto the high ground, and they will steal the nether ward. This is a pretty big spell. 4.30, the mana pool getting drained away. Remember, he's got Aegis though, and now they drop the Necro Book as well, and he kills off the Rubik! Oh no, how unfortunate. Dyer's Finishes off the Necro Book and Pain. The trade's slightly Radiant's there, bottom top as they do take a tier 1, but IG have bigger objectives in mind. They're threatening high ground, they're blasting away. But just not enough, and now we go. go. It's on 2. Found Xiao Aid as well. Can they lock Radiant's him down long enough? He doesn't ravage. They just don't care. There's a BKB, then a Hex, permanent change. Done no chance to react. Attack. And they go through. They'll take the racks and GG. Sin, we get ourselves a game third. Why? Why? What a, what a very performance. Down, standout performance by him. And that's not to say the other players didn't really play well. I think they all did their jobs and they kind of played a great game. But for me, YYF in this game really standing out. I think. I guess what we could say for the plays themselves, YYF, I guess, very flashy plays here on the Void, great Chronospheres. For overall decision making, I think Ferrari deserves to uh, to be mentioned here for the Pugna. His movement around the map, his decision making on when to push where was really on the money here. So, and great game from IG. I think the, the draft. draft.